your feet this morning, Chef Hilton. How many of you want freedom this morning? Oh, come on, how many of you want freedom this morning? Come on, put your hands together with us like this. Father, we thank you for freedom in your house this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your breaking chains, oh God. Thank you, Lord.
to him this morning. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that you are for us, God. You are for us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord God. We proclaim your name, God. Thank you, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So faithful. So constant, so loving and so true, so powerful in all you do, you feel me, you see me, you know my every move, you love for me. Sing to you, and I know that you are for me. I know that you are for me. I know that you will never forsake me in my weakness, and I know. Heart, to remind me of who you are, oh, oh, oh. to remind me, Jesus, oh, 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 oh. so patient.
Uh, come, give God some praise this morning in this house. Tell your neighbor there is power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. We've been singing about freedom this morning. And how you know what? He frees of freedom, freedom, freedom. No more bondage, no more chains, no more shackles. I am free. And then we sung about, Lord, I know that you are for me. God is for you this morning. And I want you to know that prayer has gone up before you ever walked in the doors this morning. And God prepared you just for this moment right now, right here, right now. Because God wants to break some chains this morning. God wants to break some chains off of people this morning. God knew that who would come in the doors. God knew that who would be here. God knew who was in the first service. God knew that who would be in the second service. And God wants to speak to you this morning. He wants to break chains. You know what? We all got some junk this morning. Oh, come on, somebody. But there is power. There's power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Woo! Sing with us. There is. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is. There is power in the name of Jesus. You need to declare that this morning. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh, to break. Break every chain. Break every chain. All sufficient. All sufficient. Sacrifice. So freely given. So Now, as we go into our altar time th this morning, there are those of you that should be at the altar, and those that are here will make room for you this morning. You say, well, you know what? I don't need chains broken off of me. But you know what? Yes, you do. There are those who have come in here, and you come in here with your stuff, with your junk, and you need God to break those chains. You say, but God, I don't know what's in me. God knows what's in us. Come on, somebody. God knows what you walked in here with, and God knows that what you don't have to leave here with. Even though you came in with it, you don't have to leave with it. So I'm going to say, come on down this morning. We're going to sing this song again. And you know what? And maybe you might need to stand in the gap for a loved one. Say, God, I need you to break the chains off my children. God, break the chains, God. Break the chains that's going on in my family, God. God, there's some mess going on on my job. There's something in me, God. I don't know what it is, God, but there's something in me, God. I don't feel the same. I, I, I can't worship the same, God, but I need you. 
I need you. And God is waiting for you this morning. Come on and make sure you come on up a little bit closer because the people are coming. But know when you come down to the altar, don't play with God this morning because we're here to do battle in the spiritual realm. We're here to break some stuff this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing it again. There is power. Sing it. There is power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. There is power. In the name of Jesus. Just lift those hands towards heaven. There is. To break every chain, 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 to break every chain. Sing again, to break, to break, break every chain, Lord, break every chain, Lord. 
right now? Do you feel your shackles falling off? Do you feel free and released in the Spirit of God to walk out in strength and in favor? God is a God of the miraculous that in a moment of time will transition you and pull you up out of your situation. How many can give God a praise from the depths of their belly today? Oh, come on, family. If we can shout for the Royals baseball team until we lose our voice, can we give God some praise? Yeah! the 107th chapter then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and guess what he broke their chains in pieces oh that men would give thanks to the Lord for he's great and greatly to be praised Lord we thank you right now we thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the power that comes down on high. Lord, and is able to strengthen us and carry us through whatever brokenness, whatever circumstance, whatever situation that we face. Lord, there may be brokenness in the house today. Lord, when we don't have a solution and Lord, it gets foggy and dark and we don't know how we're going to make it through. But I know a God that sees his people's needs that comes in the midst of their circumstance and it may not be answered yet, but I'll keep giving you praise in the midst of what I go through and say, Lord, have your way in my life. I'll give you praise while I have breath in this mortal body. And I'll say thank you, Jesus, for you're worthy of our praise, our glory, and our honor. If you can give him some thanks today, give him praise as the shackles are falling. In the name of Jesus. There's power. There is power. Praise the name of Jesus. Can you give somebody a high five and a hug? Can we give God some glory today? As you hug them, tell them I feel the chains falling. I see you, big guy. Come on now. I feel the chains falling. Jesus. By your glory, by your majesty, by your power, by your might. We thank you, Jesus. And we glorify you. Jesus. Jesus. There's something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance 
after the rain. Jesus. Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we can worship him one more time. It's all right. Just give him some worship. Some adoration. Some praise. As he guides us and leads us and directs us and does his glory in the midst of our lives. How many are happy to be in the house of God today? Amen. Amen. What a blessing. What a dynamic offering for our praise team and our choir to all of our musicians to be able to lead us. Amen. Into his throne room of grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. What a blessing to see everybody here today. Amen. Do we have any that are here visiting for the first time? Can you please raise your hands? Amen. Give them some real love. Amen. I see you right there. She's waving her hand. Can we make our new folks feel welcome today? Yes. What a blessing. We're so glad that you decided to come and join us today. Amen. In the house of the Lord with God's glory and majesty and purpose. Amen are always here to fill us and strengthen us. For those that may be visiting through these double doors to your left, there's a visitor's reception area. Please stop by there before you leave today. We have a host of wonderful people that'll meet you and love on you. And we have some refreshments for you and any questions that you may have about our church, we'd love to answer those, amen? Make sure you stop by, amen? Our ushers are assembled all around our congregation. They have debit envelopes in their possession, amen? Anybody here in the house that would like to give by means of your debit card, just raise your hands. They'd be gracious to be able to assist you as quickly as they can. Amen. What a blessing. We'll be able to give shortly in our service. Amen. Time of giving is transitional to our lives and understanding God's purpose. Amen. Real quickly, I did want to say something dynamic today, specifically personally for me, but I'm going to do this anyway. Amen. It is my wife's birthday today, amen? Miss Erica Mabian. I love you, sweetie. Come on now. We shall celebrate when we leave. Come on now. She like Mexican food. We'll find a good Mexican restaurant. Come on, somebody. And go on a little shopping spree, amen? Just a little now, not too much, amen? I counted them bills out already. Come on, somebody. Happy birthday, sweetie. Love you. Amen. Can we give a hand clap for Deacon Derek Haynes as he comes out real quickly to give a quick announcement? Give him a hand clap as he comes. Dressed in his royal blue. Give him some real love, Sheffield, with that Haynes trot. Come on now. Just a little bit of excitement. I know. Hey, man, how y'all doing this morning? How y'all doing this morning? Hey, man, well, you guys, Pastor Austin introduced it last week. But next week is Pastor's Appreciation. And this is where we get to step up as the body of Christ and really appreciate our pastors. They're part of the body. Now, just think about it. We got our youth pastors taking care of the youth. We got our children pastors taking care of our children. We got special care like if somebody dies, we have Pastor Willie and his team taking care of those that are bereaving. We got, we got Pastor Randy taking care of when we need counseling. We having trouble with our marriage. We having problems with just raising our children. We got somebody to talk to. We got Pastor Mike going out to the hospital visiting us while we're sick. Man, you're laying up in the bed, and, and here all of a sudden here he shows up with excitement, with the anointing of God to bless us. Man, we got, y'all seen Pastor Nicole laying it out. Everything she had, she poured it out. You got the Dr. Westlake here who got us to this point because of this man right here. It's the reason why we're here. Then we got our chief and commander, Pastor George, who puts it down for us week in, week out. Last but not least, my man right here, on, Pastor Ray, on, putting it down, y'all. Now, it's not easy doing that, y'all. It's not easy. 
There's sleepless night that goes in for doing these things. There's battles that come against their families for standing for us, for being in the gap for us. They hurt like we hurt. They kids go to the hospital just like our kids go to the hospital, just like we go to the hospitals. They have concerns like us, but a lot of times they're sacrificing for us. This is a big body. It's a big body, so there's, they hurt when we hurt. They rejoice when we rejoice. So we need to do the same for them. We need to give to them, appreciate them. Just imagine if all of us do our part. We just do, do what God speaks to you to do. You heard the names. And I missed, well, I didn't say his name, but uh, Pastor Gilbert. I said, he, I said, and y'all know him, but don't miss none of those pastors. Some are seen more than others. But next week is our week. It's our time. Now's the time for us to represent. Now's the time. So y'all, don't just, this is, I'm not doing this for no hype. I hope you feel me. And we want them to feel us. We want them to see our appreciation. You can do whatever God puts in you to do. Do all that he tells you to do. It can be a, it can be a written note. It can be a monetary gift. Whatever God speaks to you to do, it's going to touch them deeply. Deeply. So don't forget, there are going to be some tables out there to help you. There will be some tables with, with the pastor's names on them, some cards to set, so, so that you could be set up. To, all you got to do is drop in what you're going to do and put it in these baskets. But let's take care of our pastors. Let's best bless them next week. Are y'all with me? Yeah. One more time, y'all with me? Yeah. Let's do it. Deacon Haynes, give him a hand clap now. That's just a little bit of energy right there. I appreciate that love. That's all right. Amen. And Derek has that all the time. Amen. He's always on the go and ready. If we turn our attention to our video screens, our announcements will be continued. My name is Shelly Carter, and I've been married one year, four months. So the conference was an opportunity for me to see um, the different stages and journey of what marriage really is. I met so many women that were full of so much transparency. They talked about the struggles they went through. They talked about real life situations. And I thought I could never encounter something like that. I thought that um, I couldn't even imagine some of the situations that were being shared and having them share their life stories really made me feel like I could overcome some of those things in the future. It helped me to see their survival, to see that God was still with them through it all, that God brought them through some of the most difficult times in their life. Amen. Let's give a hand clap for our video. We continue with our announcements. In our bulletin, it shows that there'll be shop today, but there is no shop today, so notate that. There is no shop today. The children's ministry needs individually wrapped candy for the fall festival that's coming on October 28th. Please place donations in the barrels that are located in our lobbies and also in the children's area. Amen. The Wives Prayer and Study Group is a five-week married women's prayer group based on clips from the movie War Room. Amen. The group will meet on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., beginning October 13th in the Bridal Parlor. Ladies, October 24th at 11 a.m. is the next Women at the Well meeting at our West Campus. Life Minister Debbie Goodman will share her testimony of how God has healed her from cancer three times. Amen? That's huge. Amen. Stop by the Women at the Well table after service or call Pat here at our church office for more information. Today is the day. You can help out the Student Youth Ministries Department by pur purchasing trash bags for only $10 a roll. Amen? They sell out quickly, so be sure to purchase yours as you leave today out in our lobby. If you're 18 to 35 and you're in this service and you've never been to a shift service, Pastor Kevin said he'd love to meet you there. Don't wait for a Friday service to get acquainted. You can come by the cop coffee shop right today after this service. Introduce yourself to some of the young adults of Sheffield. Amen? 
And I have to say, I had that, that pumpkin latte. Come on now. Pumpkin spice latte on today. Amen? I like that pumpkin spice latte. I don't know if you into the, the whatever that is, that extra. I like the extra. Come on, somebody. I appreciate it. That pumpkin spice latte. I'm done right there. Amen? The message for this Friday for our Shift Young Adult Service is sorry, not sorry. Amen? So those of you who have not been, get connected today. Amen? It's time to get our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, after all that anointing in this service, I know we can shout for Jesus a little better than that when it's time to give unto him. Understanding the law of tithe and offering changes your mindset and your life, family. The blessings then must flow. Um, who's waiting for overflow in your life, amen? Who's waiting for overflow in the midst of your life? Then the question comes, what am I willing to sacrifice to get there? Now that's the huge thing right there. Um, you got to go to another level for God to be able to do the miraculous that he wants to do in his life. You know, it's easy for us to splurge on our sales, amen? You know, when you get a little extra in the, in the bank and you got all your bills paid and you may even have had your tithe done and I'm going to go buy this $400 outfit and splurge on myself, huh? And I've, I've seen people buy $200 shoes and up. Come on, somebody. But have you ever given God, have you ever splurged on Jesus and given him when you have excess? Because, see, you can't beat God giving. And so as I'm able to do for myself, can I show Jesus that kind of love and give unto him like I've lost my mind? Because, see, we'll, we'll, we'll buy stuff based on labels. I don't get an amen today in this house. Amen. We'll find the label, and it can look some way, but because that label's on there, we'll pay extra amount. It's quiet, and you can look at me crazy if you want to. I know what I'm talking about. And then pull out a crinkle dollar for Jesus. That's all I came in here with. I went shopping and losing my mind yesterday. But see, before I do, it's nothing wrong with shopping. Do your shopping, but do your giving to Jesus first. Oh, about 25% heard what I said. You can splurge on yourself, but make sure you give God his tithe and offering. When you do that, you manifest overflow from the throne room and it comes down in your life. Shall we bow our heads together? Lord, we thank you for victory right now. Lord, we give you all praise, glory, and honor. Lord, we thank you that we have this opportunity to bless you in giving and bless your name. Let the floodgates open for your people out of their obedience. We bless this tithe and this offering today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone said together. Amen.
Don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. You're clapping for them. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have the, we have the distinct privilege of uh, having baby dedications now, dedicating several children to the Lord, which is uh, an awesome thing. And we've got families. We have families. We don't got families. We have families uh, who, are, who are sitting over here, and their children have been so unbelievably patient. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that we have to wait this deep into service to, to make this happen. I'm going to ask the, uh, the pastors and those who are helping us to, to come to the front, if they would, please. And we're going to guide the families. And families, you're welcome to bring anyone you want with you, uh, families, friends, and uh, your guests. And we will try to create some kind of separation between families up here. The pastors will join with the families. First, we have Colossia, Faith, Boswell. Pastor Kevin, coming from a different land, a land far away. And next we have, uh, we have some, some, a set of twins, eight-month-old set of twins, I.J. Bird and Asia Bird. Ideally, they should get twice the applause. Ricky, Andre, Harper. This is a family you don't want to mess with. They have people. Anybody else who thinks you're related to them, please join us in the front. If you see someone that could be a cousin. And next we have uh, two brothers. This is awesome. Uh, Anthony Harrison, who's three years old, and Dominic Harrison, who's six months old. We have Langston, Robert, McKeithen. Next we have Mila Miller. Now, I think we should give the biggest hand to the people. If someone you don't recognize, you need to give them a big hand. So give these people a bigger hand because they're... Do we have a pastor for the Millers? Okay. Bella Ann Perez. Next, we have Chase Michael Snipes. And 
There's a uh, there's a miracle story that goes along with this one. So this is uh, this is truly uh, an act of God that this family's coming up for dedication today. And then Jayla Sade Springs, or possibly Jayla Sade Springs. Spriggs. It is not Springs, it's Spriggs. Sorry about that. Thank you. This is an amazing array of families. What a great picture this is. I love this, and I know it, it, it takes time, but it's a priority in the house of God because there is nothing greater that any of you can say than, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the most profound thing you can say in your home, and it's the most profound thing you can do in your life. Fathers, mothers, dads, moms, uh, that's it. It comes down to that. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And with you here today and so many friends and family with you, it's obvious that you are saying, God, we commit our child or our children to you. Nothing is easy. Parenting is one of the most difficult things on the planet. That's why so many people give up on it. But we're going to pray a special blessing on you and your children. We're going to pray that God would lead and guide, and, and I always want to pray in the world we live in now, that God will protect, give extra protection to your children, because none of us ever know what's going to happen to our kids when they walk out of our door. And so we pray extra protection, and I believe, I believe with all my heart, uh, families, that when you say, I am dedicating my child to God in his house, they have extra favor, and they have extra blessing. I believe that with all my heart. It's a, it is a, it is a biblical practice. I know a lot of churches, denominations sprinkle and have different methods of baptism. The only biblical precedent there is for children is they were brought to the house of the Lord and dedicated. And that's why we do this, because it's a biblical thing. It's a God thing. And when we do things that are God things, God shows up. And so uh, we count on that. So parents, just a simple question. To the best of your ability, will you lead your children in following Jesus Christ? Will you provide an example to the best of your ability for them? And when they come of age, will you lead them to a personal relationship with Christ? If so, respond by saying, I will. Thank you very much. We're going to agree in prayer. You can remain seated. We're going to pray a prayer of dedication over these families and these children. Thank you for letting us be your spiritual family, your church family. We don't take that lightly. It's a huge honor for us. And thank you so much for allowing us to be that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that uh, you care about us. And these blessings that are children today, these blessings that you've given these families in the way of, of children, of lives, God, we just want to return those blessings, those gifts to you as first fruits. Today, we honor you in giving you the first fruit of the blessing that you've given us, which is biblical. And I pray, God, that you would lead and guide and we pray extra protection over every one of these children. Lord, I pray no violence, no harm, no hurt at the hand of any other person, no, nothing, nothing detrimental physically or in a violent sense or in a criminal sense would come across their path. God, we pray that your angels would have charge over them and give, uh, give, them, give them direction and understanding. And Lord, I pray for these parents that you would give them favor as parents. You would give them financial blessing. You would give them blessing in their home. Give their children the blessing of health. And God, I pray that as today they've said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, that you will honor each one of them. And it's not based on merit. It's not based on how good we are. It's based on that we live our life to try to honor you. So we pray that for them. We pray that for these families and especially these children today. God, we lift up Colossia Faith Boswell to you. We lift up I.J. Bird. We lift up Asia Bird. We dedicate Ricky Andre Harper to you. We dedicate Anthony Harrison and Dominic Harrison today. God, we lift up Langston Robert McKeithen. We pray for Mila Miller. 
God, we lift up Bella Ann Perez. We dedicate Chase Michael Snipes today. And we lift up Jayla Sade Spriggs to you today, Lord. And we ask for specific favor, specific direction, your hand of protection and your guidance on them, favor and blessing at every turn. So we lift them up to you and we, we dedicate them today in your house in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Let's give them a great ovation today. Thank you so much. Families, thank you again. Thank you so much for being here and sitting through service and allowing us to agree with you and dedicate your child. And uh, in essence, we're dedicating your whole family again to God today. We are thrilled to partner with you. And uh, as I say many, many times, if, you, if there's one that just stuck out in your mind, pray for that child, pray for that family. God would probably bring them back to, to your memory to pray for them. So we ask you to do that, as every family, every family needs extra blessing and extra favor in, 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 today's, in today's society, and uh, we believe that. So thank you, families. After you get your, uh, your flower, uh, you, you're welcome to return to your seat. And if there's some of you that need to slip out for your child's sake, we understand that, no guilt in that. This is more than most churches have in their altar in an entire year. So I'm, I'm, that, was, uh, that was just thrilling to see all the, all the people, all the families here supporting each other. The choir is going to sing to us and then uh, going to preach out of the 23 series. Uh, it, well, it's not, not an incredibly long message today, but uh, something that I think has some profundity to it uh, or profoundness, whichever you choose. But... Uh, couple points that uh, that I think will do you well to hear and I'm excited to deliver to you and now I'm just kind of killing time I've been working on a song I, I play it I don't sing it I just play it on my on my on my phone but I've been working on it That's it. That's the one. <laughs> All right, welcome, uh, welcome our choir. I always love it when our choir sings. It's one of my favorite parts of the service.
Thank you so much, choir and band. Thank you. Going to get right into the 23 series, verse 5. David says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Now, we're looking at this from a shepherd's viewpoint, and then I'll give you a couple other thoughts toward the end. But David changed, if you read through the 23rd Psalm, David changed the tense by which he was speaking to God. It was, he leads me in green pastures. He maketh me lie down. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And then he goes into, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, as Pastor Ray preached last week, comfort and protect me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He goes from he, goes from he to you. As he's going through this, we don't know how long it took him to write this. If it was straight through, if he stopped and played music, if it was over days, if it was over weeks that he penned this, if he was working on it for months or even years, we don't know. It would be nice if we could, if we could learn and, and understand some of that. We don't know the time frame, but in this time frame, he went from speaking of God as he to saying you. And in our relationships with God, in our journeys with God, that change happens at some point. We go from he, oh yeah, God is good, God is this, God is that, to we begin to talk to God like you. Thank you for what, you've doing, for what you're doing in my life. Thank you for your sacrifice. I love you, God. We tell other people I love God. It's easier to tell people we love God and we believe in God than it is to tell God we love him. When we change it from he to you, and I know that's not the emphasis of this, but that's one of the pieces that is obviously there. And we don't know if it was a purposeful change, a spiritual change, something that took place in his life, or it just might have been a change of direction of, the, of how he was flowing and writing. But we see that he changed from he to you, and I think that's noteworthy. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. The word mesa, <coughs> excuse me, the word mesa, comes into play here. It's not mentioned. It's not in the original Hebrew. The word is not, but the picture is there. Mesa in many different languages, in Spanish, in African languages, in Portuguese, in some Indian languages, Mesa means table. Mesa means table. And as I told you two weeks ago, if you were here, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. As the weather gets warmer in the year, the shepherd will lead the sheep to higher grounds and higher pastures. And new grass, new pastures, because they graze where they can close to home during the coldest months. And then as it warms up, they go further away and they go to higher country where the grass is going to be new, it's going to be fresh, it's going to be the best they can find. So they travel to new plateaus. Plateaus on mountains where there is, are flat levels of grass are called tables. It's a mesa. Mesa, Arizona is a table. Mesa means table. So they travel to different mesas to find new grass, new territory for the sheep. And that's a table. That's a table. Now, the shepherd is not the owner of the sheep. The shepherd is the keeper of the sheep. The owner looks at the sheep as investment, product, what he gets his life from, his life, his life earnings from. The shepherd, however, looks at the sheep as what he spends his life doing every day. That's one of the differences between being called to full-time ministry and called to service to God. Because service to God is investment. Full-time ministry, which I'm called to, some of you are called to, is living every day taking care of the sheep. It's a different calling. So David is looking at the picture from a shepherd's point of view on one hand, and there's the mesa, there's the table. 
Now, what happens? The owner of the sheep, when they're traveling and they're going to a new area and they're going to a new table, a new mesa, he will hire people and send them ahead to clear that mesa, to clear that table, that pasture of anything that's going to harm the sheep. The sheep are not the smartest animals. I haven't said that a lot because I don't want that insinuation out there a lot. But sheep are known to not be the wisest animals of all. You don't go to at circuses, you don't see a lot of sheep acts. And now the trained sheep. <laughs> and there you have it. Thank you very much. Thanks for showing up. You don't see a lot of that. And so the, the sheep will, will run into any problem that's there. So the, the, the owner of the sheep will send people, will hire people to go into the mesa, go into the table of new land where they're going and clear that. They will clear out brush that will be detrimental to them. They will take away things that will, uh, that will possibly bring harm to the sheep, things that can lead them astray, distractions in the field. They will try to clear it of any, of any bugs and bacteria that might be there that they can get out with, with special things and special uh, things they did to clear areas. So they will go in and they will, they will prepare the table for the sheep. They will prepare the mesa for the sheep to come to that higher ground so they can graze on better grass. You're starting to see the picture. They go in and they prepare the table. Now what happens, every, and, and this, is, this is profound in our, in our spiritual journey, every new area has different predators. And I have learned, and, and, and you have learned as well, many of you, with every new level that you go to in spiritual service, every new level truly has new devils. There's no question about it. If you go deeper, and I know these are kind of Christian words, if you go deeper with God and you go further in your relationship with God or you go further in your service to God, you will face new predators on a spiritual level that you didn't know existed when you were in the lower grounds. Because with every new level, there are new levels of spiritual attack. I promise you there are. And when you think you've seen it all, you have not seen it all. Because the next level will produce a brand new devil. And he's not new, but it's new to you. And so what happens, these predators hang around. The predators hang around and they watch. Because down in the lower lands, there were not some of the predators that live in the higher lands. Literally, different species of predators are in the higher country than in the lower country. So the shepherd, the, the, the people go in there to clear it as the shepherd's leading the sheep to that territory. And one of the things that happens is the predators, and we know animals don't necessarily talk. Uh, you know, the, I mean, they do in movies. I wish they did in real life. We, our dog, we had a dog, Lucky, and Lexi and I, we think we heard her talk on Christmas Day one year. She's since gone on to be with the Lord. But she talked. I'm pretty sure of it. Lexi confirmed it. But most of you don't have talking dogs. And cats don't deserve a voice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Because you know they would say nothing positive. <laughs> but these predators that hang around... Predators that hang around areas, given areas, new areas, are waiting, waiting, they're lurking. Lurking is a good word. Lurking means they're just hiding, hiding in the dark, waiting to surprise an attack, waiting to bring harm to something. They're lurking for, to, with bad intentions. And they see these people clearing this area, and they know, they know that something is changing. Now, it's ironic because animals have an amazing sense about them. And the fact that there are creatures here that do not live here that are clearing the area, that are there, that are present, that are doing things, lets them know it's not as soft a target as they might think. You know, one of the things we have the luxury of having here at Sheffield is we have great security inside and outside the building. Now, we will have people, it's true, we really do, and, and we, can, we can have great services and great events in part because of that. As security is largely important. There was a day when, you, when cars used to get stolen off this lot almost every Sunday. And that day is no longer here and hasn't been for a long time. So that's wonderful. 
but we have, we have a, a presence outside. You know, churches are considered soft targets. That's why a lot of crime takes place in churches. Uh, churches get broken into, things happen, uh, people get hurt, crazy stuff happens, and that can still happen, but most churches are a soft target. We have, we have police cars out front or sheriff's cars, and we have people in uniform out front who, who are actually brandishing weapons. And so that says to people who are of a criminal mindset, this is not as soft a target as I might think. And we have security around that's always watching. He's got the jacket, he's got the glasses. And that, my friend, is a dope jacket right there. That is old school dope right there. So, and matching shoes is deep, it's all the way. And this guy's just nothing but cool. He's not gonna break, man. Nothing but cool. All right, all right. <laughs> so people might look at us, and we have, we have people who come in here consistently. You don't get the privilege of hearing a lot about this, but we have people who come in and case the joint. They look at it. They check it out. What can we do? Because we take an offering here. There's money traveling in the building. Ding, 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 ding. So there's an opportunity. And they come in and they say, we're going to hang around here for a few weeks and watch. And, and we've had this many, many times. People come in for two or three weeks and our security's on them as soon as they walk in the door. They don't know they're being watched, but they are. And so they're being watched and we watch them as they're watching us. And so they, they, watch, they watch the pattern, they watch the flow. You know, you're going to watch somebody's pattern, then you're going to interrupt that pattern. And so that's what they're watching for. And eventually they realize this. And this is what I tell people about Sheffield. You could still get in here and do something crazy, but you're not going to get out. So somebody could still come in here anytime and do something really crazy and hurt people or do whatever, but they will not get out those doors. And if they do, they won't get off the property. And if they get off the property, they won't get very far. Because I know you'll handle them before they get out that door. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have confidence in you. And that's just the women. The men won't even have to get up yet. If it gets really ugly, then some of you men will get up. <laughs> but there's a presence. And you know what that tells predators? Because people who want to commit crimes against churches are predators. And a lot of times, crimes in churches are crimes against children. So very much predator. What that tells predators is there's a different presence here. And so when people come in, when the, when the owner sends people in, to prepare the table. See, that's a big deal that you never hear anything about. Preparing the table for the sheep to come in. Preparing the mesa, the top, the greenest part of the pasture, the best grass there is to graze on, the best water nearby. When the people come in to prepare that, the predators know there's a different presence here. And then the sheep come in. And they do that. The sheep come in. And it's prepared for them. Now, one of the things that, that happens, and it doesn't happen for the sheep that are in the pastures, but it happens for us in a spiritual sense. God tells us something He wants to do in our life. He directs us. He speaks to us. He leads us. He guides us. He puts something in our heart and we say, okay, God, that's the green light. I got confirmation from a song I heard on the radio. I opened the, the Bible and read one verse, and it told me to go. So I'm doing this. This must be the green light. And we go, we want to go and do something. We say, come on, Lord, you've called me to do this. Let me do it. Come on, God, let me do it. It's time, it's time, it's time. And we've not given God a chance to prepare the table for us. We've not given God a chance to prepare the pasture for us. Now, I'm going I'm, I'm to narrow this down a little bit. 
Those of you in the crowd, you say, God has specifically directed me to do something. And it's a life thing. And I'm not saying, you know, full-time ministry or whatever, but it's a life thing. It's a life decision. It's a life calling. It's a life turn. It's a life change. It's something that is a, that is a hard left or right turn. And you know God has, has spoken that to you. You don't know when it's going to happen, but you know God's spoken that to you. And that can be all the way from school to, to job to life to relationship to whatever. But you know God has specifically spoken something to you that's a left or right turn. Stand where you are right now. Don't let peer pressure get to you. Just if, if, this is, if this applies to you. See, this is amazing. Look around. Look around and see all the people standing. God has spoken something specific to you. Now let me, let me speak just a little bit of, of life and spirit direction to you. First of all, if God has spoken that to you, and he has confirmed it, don't let anybody steal it from you. Number one, don't let anybody steal it from you. Because everything and everybody can become a predator. Even good people and godly people can become predators when it turns into something that God has spoken to your heart. Because nobody but you knows what God has really spoken to your heart. So when somebody says, that can't be, you can't do that, that won't work, you need to go ahead and say thank you and move on your way. Because if God calls you to something, guess what? You can do it. And it's possible. So don't let anybody steal it from you. Secondly, if it takes forever to happen, hang on to it anyway. Because there are seasons of life. And in the spirit sense, seasons are very dramatic and graphic. And so if God has called you to something and you think, you know what, that, there's no way that could even happen because I'm not even pointing that direction, God can change the season of your life. And he will if he has to. Thirdly, you cannot go to that table, you cannot go to that table until it's been prepared for you. You cannot go to that table until it's been prepared. If you go too early, you might lose the calling. If you say, God, I don't care what you say, I'm going because I want to do this, and it's in me, and it's a fire, and I can't put it out, so I've got to go. Well, you might be on your own. Because until, until the, the authority, until God in your life goes into that new pasture, and cleans it up, if you go there, you will hurt yourself. If you go there, you might die spiritually. There are a lot of people who aren't in church today because they said, I think this is God, and they flew a different direction, and it wasn't God. And if somebody else tries to tell you what you're supposed to do about your life and prophesy over you, you put that through the God filter and make sure the holes are as small as you can make them. Don't let much of it through unless God speaks it to you. Because people will lead you along the right path, the wrong path. That table won't be prepared. And you'll get to that pasture and there'll be thorns and there'll be poisonous berries all over the place. And you'll get hungry and you'll eat them. And you'll die. It is possible to kill our calling. It is possible to kill our, kill our calling. How many of you understand this? I tried to kill mine when I was younger and was wrestling with my calling. How many, how many calling killers do we have in a room? You tried to kill your calling. Man, I've tried. I tried everything. I tried to kill mine. I tried to put it to sleep. Just rest. Give me a decade. Rip Van Winkle. Go rip Van Winkle on me. Wouldn't do it. But you can kill your calling if you go to that pasture too early. So when you say, I thought it was God, but it's not, so I'm just going to go back and do this again. I thought it was God, and it's not, so I'm going to give up. Apparently, I can't hear God. Do you think that's a predator speaking that to your mind? It is. It's the enemy of your soul. Because the enemy of your soul has one goal, to steal from you. It's a three-pronged goal. It's like a three-pronged fork, a pitchfork, to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy who you are in Christ. 
And he will take from you, and he will attack your favor among people. He will attack your finances, and he will attack everybody in your family. Favor, family, and finances, the enemy will come in and try to devour it all. And so when you go to that table, that mesa, you have to wait till it's prepared. So if it takes forever and you feel like there is nothing left, some of you have have walked away from businesses, have walked away from money opportunities, have walked away from other dreams. Some of you have said, God, I know you're calling me to this, and it's a sacrifice on every level, and you're paying for it every day. Hang on, because God is preparing that table for you right now. God is preparing that table for you, so hang on. Hang on, because at some point the season is going to change and you're going to be able to go to that new mesa, that new level, that new plateau. Well, I'm going to pray for you who are standing right now because I know every single one of you have to battle for your calling. Every one of you. And and for God's favor in going the right direction. So we're going to pray that. Heavenly Father, right now, I pray for every one of these people who have stood and said, it's a hard left or right turn, but it's a new direction, and I know God's speaking to me. I know he's called me. God, I pray that you would protect that in their soul, in their spirit, in their heart. Protect that calling. We know the predators are lurking, hanging out with bad intentions. And God, I pray that you would shut the mouths of the liar, the enemy of their soul, and you would help them to hear your word and your voice and focus on that. And God, I pray that you would protect their heart, protect the people around them, their favor, their finance, their family, protect the things around them, lead them, guide them, give them everything they need because you are their shepherd, and because of that, they have all they need in you. So we commit them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. Thank you for allowing that. You may be seated. You have to be wise and cautious when you go to that new level. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking about, it's not all ministry. You know what kind of decision God has put in your heart. You know what direction he's put in your heart. It's all kinds of different things. Wait on God. Wait for that table to be prepared because the predators are lurking. You'll question it. You'll doubt it. You'll pray on it over and over, and God will continue to confirm it in your heart, and he will continue to let you know that he's there. Secondly, the last piece of this, and I'll do this quickly. In this fifth verse, David is also acknowledging God because of the the act of preparing the feast, preparing a blessing. You prepare a table before me. From a shepherd's vantage point, it's the mesa, it's the table, it's the new territory, it's the new land, it's the new field that you're going to, that God has called you to, that he's preparing for you in the presence of predators. From a blessing standpoint, it can also be and is also, as David presents it, he prepares a feast for you, prepares a feast for me in the middle of doubt, Pain, loss, hatred, turmoil, drama, negativity. God will give you blessing in the middle of Bedlam. Your God is able to give you blessing in the middle of Bedlam. And Bedlam is confusion, confusion, misunderstanding, insanity on some levels. God will give you blessing and favor in the midst of Bedlam. And see, the God we serve, the God we serve is this God. Things may be going bad. Things may be in a confusing state. They might be in a state of bedlam, misunderstanding, loss. That doesn't determine God's blessing on you. Because this is saying, what David is also saying, is he prepares a feast, a blessing for us in the presence of everything that's against me. It's like being in the midst of people who don't like you or hate you or against you, and you get honored. God honors you in the middle of situations that don't like you. That's the God that you serve. You can be in ugliness and somehow see beauty. Because he's preparing a feast, a blessing for you in the middle of your enemies. I went to the Royals game the other night, the one they lost. It rained. We were sitting there, and it began to sprinkle. 
I'm a guy. I don't mind getting wet. Hey, rain on me. I'm good. Except for the hair. You know, if it could miss the hair, I'd be all right. Some of you ladies understand that. Some of you men, have Brother Allo, you don't have a clue. <laughs> that means nothing to you. Sister Outlaw, I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> Joyce, you can't laugh. <laughs> but sitting there at the game, and it started, you know, it started to sprinkle a little bit. I'm thinking, now oh, this, and, and, you know, I was with a couple guys. We're going, hey, this is no big deal. Just sprinkle it. It's not a big deal. Stay right here. Stay right here. And it starts sprinkling a little more. And, and the people with an IQ of, of double digits or higher, Every all of us who are not who are you know we're single digit IQ people. I got an IQ of eight, and so we sat there, and it began to rain harder and harder and harder, and I got very wet, and uh, it was it was not fun. It's kind of like going to Worlds of Fun and riding the log ride first, first big mistake. You want to go on the water rides? Let's go on the water rides. No. That is a no. And I'm at the age now where water rides don't even exist. If they even, if they even spell water anywhere, if they smell it, if you can see water from the ride, I'm not riding it. And so, soaking wet, it rained so hard we had to get up. We went up to the mesa that was prepared for us. It had a covering. And so, we went up there and stood for a while. Then it stopped raining, and we all thought, okay, let's go back down and watch the rest of the game. The Royals were losing. I was soaking wet. What, what can be better than that? And so we went back and sat down, and guess what? It started raining again. And the meteorologist came on the screen and told us it might be some scattered showers as we're trying to look through the typhoon to see it. And so there we are, we're wet, and I'm sitting there, and literally, we got to the point, it got this bad for me, and, I, and I'm a Royals fan, and I love baseball all the way back, all the way back, and it got so bad for me when everybody was standing, everybody was standing and cheering and doing things, I was just like, nope. <laughs> I was on the end so I could put a little Detroit lean on it. Nope, I'm not standing. I'm wet. Every time I stand, it feels like I get wetter. And then I have to sit down again, brand new. So I'm sitting there wet. Royals are losing. I had a bad feeling. I always know whether they're going to win or lose. I knew they were going to lose. So it's like, there's nothing good about this. And all of a sudden, I decided to stand up because the rest of the stadium was and people were beginning to chastise me. No, they weren't, but... So I stood up, and we had little towels, and I was like, yeah, okay. And then, and then it was, I think it was the seventh inning stretch, which I'm not really a fan of anyway. And so I looked out there, and the fountains were going, and they had God Bless America on the screen, and somebody in a uniform singing it, some lady who just killed it. And, and all of a sudden, I just thought, you know what? This is amazingly beautiful. Those fountains, they were different colors. And, and I'm looking around thinking, you know, we, we still have, all these years later, and we still have one of the nicest stadiums in, in the country. And this is beautiful. And this is all incredible. And I stood there, and I, and I know this is a real simplistic, superficial illustration, but I stood there in the middle of everything being wrong. Everything being wrong, and I looked and I thought, man, this is beautiful. This really is beautiful, and I'm pretty privileged to be standing here, seeing all of this tonight. You can be in the worst rainstorm of your life. You can feel like everything is going wrong, and everybody in this room has sat in that chair at some point, where you feel like you have the opposite of the Midas touch, and everything you touch turns to junk or falls apart. Nothing is going right. God has put all this stuff in your heart. He's put all this stuff in front of you, and it's not happening. None of it's happening. Nothing's going right. Nobody has favor on you. There are no finances. Even your family doesn't like you anymore. 
So it's all going wrong. Everything seems to be falling apart. You can be in the worst rainstorm of your life. And your God, let me tell you a little bit about your God. Your God is one that even in the worst rainstorm of your life will show you beauty. He will be setting that table for you. He will set that table for you, and he will prepare the way even if you're in the worst place of your life. You have to let him prepare that table. One of the reasons we love to go out to eat is because we love to sit down at a table that's already prepared and to have food that's already prepared. None of us like it in our own house when you smell the food and you're ready to eat and somebody says, uh, you need to set the table. Who wants to get the drinks, get the silverware, the plates? Somebody's got to do it, and everybody just kind of looks at each other. Or you leave the room. Mm. We want it prepared for us. We love that. Somebody should have some kind of mechanism that's just hydraulics underneath the table, just raises up a new plate. (laughs) New cups, new silverware. And you do have to wash it. It all needs to be disposable somehow. God prepares the table for you. And the awesome thing about God is when, is when you wait, those of you who stood up earlier, and some of you are undoubtedly in a period of waiting, a season of waiting, what God put in your heart is not yet happening. And maybe you can't even see it off in the horizon, but you know he put it there. He's preparing it for you. Even now, he's preparing it. He's preparing it. If you will wait, if you will wait and let him clear that pasture, If you will wait and let him clear that off. You know, we don't think of it in these terms, but a lot of times God can't move us to the next place because the next place isn't ready for us yet. Maybe God has not changed your season because that season is not ready for you yet. Maybe you're ready for it, but it's not ready for you. Because if you walk into a season that's not ready for you, if you walk into an environment that's not ready for you and you're ready for it, it will explode on you. Predators, predators. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Anybody have enemies? I've got a couple. You have a few enemies? Try to keep, I always try to keep a running list for prayer's sake. It's amazing when God, when God glorifies you in the midst of your enemies. One of the things I love to do for my kids this is selfish. It, it's very, it's very self-centered. It's not selfish. It's very self, self-indulgent. I admit this, so you can put this thing, you can put this to prayer. And I don't do it as much as now that they're a little bit older. But I'm still capable. Whenever you know they'd be in a circle and 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 other children would have something and they're kind of rubbing it in everybody's face or making fun of your kid because they don't have it. Take a pair of shoes, for example. They've got the new. They got the new LeBrons that came out. And they and and so they're there and they're making fun of your kids and these other three kids are laughing at you. I was the dad who would go find the next Jordan that you could only get online and get the shoe that nobody had yet and put that on my kid and say, you know what? Now walk back into the circle. Walk back into the circle. I loved I loved to give them and provide them with things that would deflect their enemies. I loved it. It was, it was great fun as a dad, and it wasn't always about material things. A lot of it was just about showing up. Austin used to get made fun of because there was a season when, when I was off work, when, I, when he was in grade school, I would ride my bike to his, to his school. He'd ride his bike to school. I'd ride my bike to his school every day after school and meet him outside the school, and we'd ride home together. Every day. And his friends used to make fun of him for that. Your dad's here, you know what, but. There's a lot more to that story. But you know what, no, it's just being there. Being there. And eventually, most of his friends would be like, hey, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, you know, because. They would understand that it wasn't as they were perceiving it. 
you have enemies. You will always have enemies. You get talked about. Bad things get said about you. People look at you a different way. You walk in a room and people roll their eyes at you. Anybody ever experienced that? <laughs> you walk in a room and people automatically roll their eyes at you. You just want to go punch their eyes right out of their head. I mean, you know, somebody could want that if they weren't as spiritual as we are. Friends you know, pray for them. People you know. Always have enemies. There will always be predators. I've let predators steal my joy so many times in, in life and in ministry and following God. You know, I've, I've, I've fallen short so many times that way. God puts something in your heart and you let a predator steal it. I've done it so many times. I'm still capable of doing it. I still let predators steal my joy sometimes. God puts something there and, and you know it's a predator and you still let them steal it. Um, let him prepare that table for you in the presence of your enemies. You know what? What people say about you doesn't matter. What people think about you doesn't matter. The bad things that people say, the doubt they cast on you, the questions they ask, and when they say, if I were you, well, you will never be me. Stand with me if you would. I will preach all day. I'm slipping into that zone. I will keep talking. I've got a, uh, I've got a piece of homework for you this, this, uh, this week. Somewhere this week, just very briefly in a very small way, tell somebody how good God is or something God's done for you. It doesn't have to be a big ordeal, but just say to somebody, and God is good. Tell somebody, you know what, God has really blessed me. And they might look at you and say, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> well, you won't see it because it's inside. Tell somebody that. Do it in, in the line as people are held hostage in, in, in grocery store lines. And store lines, tell them, turn to somebody and say, man, God is good. God is good. And if they say all the time, then you know you're good. <laughs> God is good. God has blessed me. Share a little bit of light. I'm not asking you to light the whole world. Shine a little bit of light somewhere where you are this week, in your workplace, in your school. God is good. People will say, okay. God is good. Let God, let God prepare that table inside you, around you, in front of you. I want to pray with you before you walk out the door. Thank you for, uh, for being attentive. Went a little longer than I, than I planned on. But um, I want to pray with you. And, and for this prayer and for all of these prayer, these Sundays of, of the 23 series, in prayer I, I can't help but go back to he restores my soul. He restores my soul. Because that's really the bottom line for all of it. All the, all the things that, that come against you, you know, predators, situations, life, things you encounter, things we create around us ourselves, things we willingly walk into and some unwillingly. We get to a point, we just need our soul restored. You know, it's easy to get to that spot where you just think, I am so beat down I can't find victory in anything. I can't find joy in anything. I can't find hope in anything. Or maybe it's just running a little dry and you need your soul restored today. But I want to lead you in prayer. And just with a little action, I'm not going to ask you to move or, or do anything else, but you say, Pastor, I need my soul restored today before I leave this building. I want to pray that with you, that God will restore my soul. Maybe it's the beginning of a relationship being someone who follows Christ and, and starts that journey. Maybe it's getting back on the road of that journey. Or maybe it's just renewal in your soul and spirit. You say, I need that today. I need my soul restored. I need my soul restored. And I want to pray that with you. Pray that with me today before you walk out the door. Heavenly Father, I ask you to restore my soul. I need you. And I need your restorative power. I commit myself to you as a follower of Christ. 
And I ask you to forgive my sins, change my heart, change my mind, change my direction. Give me favor, give me blessing as I follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. And God, I pray that you would seal that restoration of their soul. We all need it. I need it daily. I need my heart restored, my soul restored to you every day. So God, I pray that you would continue to do that for those who have said, I need that specifically today. Go with us, protect us, lead us, guide us, and let us somehow, let us somehow shine a little bit of light of Jesus Christ in a dark world around us. So we commit that, and I commit these people to you, your people to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Next week, 23, I'll be preaching again. Uh, I'm excited about the message next week. You will be surprised with some of what you hear. So God bless you.